Hi, this is Zachary Ball, continuing our series on the NIST audit. Today we're gonna to be covering level two. Our last video covered level one. So level two is building off of level one controls. We're basically going from, I think it was 17 controls in six categories to 72 controls in 15 categories, sorry. So we're basically adding nine categories in 55 controls. So this is quite a jump. I'm gonna be covering the six previous categories quickly, but then I'm gonna go into the new nine. We're also gonna be posting an, up, an updated link to an Excel spreadsheet breaking down all the controls with what level they are and what category they fall into. So covering level one categories, access control, identification authentication, media protection, physical protection, system and configuration protection, system and information and integrity. So those are the from level one, getting into the new categories. So the new categories of level two introduced that you'll see are awareness and training. This is pretty self-explanatory. It's pretty commonplace that companies have someone come in and do some kind of security training, maybe a security campaign. Uh, educating your end users can be the difference between getting ransomware and possibly not, not clicking on that email. So awareness and training is self-explanatory. Next category is audit and accountability. You need to know who is accessing your CUI at what time. So who touched that file, who doesn't have access to that file. Security assessment. A system security plan is a document that outlines how your organization implements security. This may be, this may be more of a written policy, and don't forget with a lot of this, there's gonna be policies. It has to be a written policy, and then you have to enforce the written policy. So a security assessment plan, that really depends on how big or small your organization is, what do you have, that's pretty open-ended. Configuration management, build and configure from a known baseline. If I had to explain this, I would say a baseline would be like maybe a workstation baseline, like when you implement a new Windows 10 machine on a, on a Domain, it has to have virus protection, updates have to be running, has to have an uh, auditing software, maybe Microsoft Office. So when it says a baseline, you need to have at least this to implement this. Incident response. A good example of incident response is a ticketing system. So you can track what incidents has happened, maybe break, fix, security type events for incident response. Maintenance. This one's pretty self-explanatory as well. So preventative maintenance. If you have a switch that's going bad and maybe out of life, you put a new one in, make sure to document the change, maybe in a ticketing system. And that's also considered making improvements to the network. Maybe you're getting rid of a server that's running 2012 and replacing it with server 2019. So system maintenance is one of the new categories. That kind of overlaps, I think, with some of the other controls that we've seen, like maintenance is also considered updates, which we've talked about previously. Personal security, screening individuals that have access to the CUI. So if you have a vendor coming in or a new employee, screening those individuals is important to do. Recovery. Recovery basically breaks down to are you testing and are you checking your backups? That's the most simplest way I can put that out there. Are you actually testing your backups? Are you making sure they're running correctly? Risk management. Periodically assessing risk to your company. So this one, this might be do something that you do once a quarter, uh, maybe once a year. Uh, a good example of this is looking at all the hardware that's there, the software, and seeing if it's maybe out of life and then replacing it with a newer version. An example would be a firewall. Let's say you're running some type of firewall that's no longer supported by the vendor. You have to implement something that is in, still supported. So if you have any questions on any of these, please reach out to us at techsupport at omnistech.com or info at omnistech.com.